Hey, it's Marianne. Welcome back to your favorite podcast and mine, The Influential Nonprofit. Welcome, welcome. As you know, I work with nonprofit leaders to master the art of influence so they can ask for and receive all they want, need, and deserve. So you can build communities of support and move that mission forward because that's what we're all here to do is move the mission forward. Today's episode is about creating structure in your life. Um, how can we live the most purposeful, impactful life we can? That is something I want to do. That's probably something you want to do. And we're going to talk about building structures and systems to support that. And because it's me, not in the way that you think, of course, right? Now, this is the kind time of year in the beginning of the year, that first quarter, when we lay the foundation for the rest of the year. We create a lot of plans and systems to hopefully support us in our goals for the rest of the year. Of course, if you listened to my podcast a few weeks ago about how fundraising goals are actually inhibiting your money, you can um, revisit that and reframe how you think about fundraising and setting those goals. And, and also we have objectives and missions that we want to achieve. And what helps us achieve those are structures and systems to support the daily activity. Now, as you know from me, I just don't look at things one way. I always look at things not from, is there is there either structure or chaos, right? There's structure and, and, and abandon. No, there's structure and flow. And, and everything is a polarity and everything wants balance. And we don't have to choose between structure or flow. We actually can do both. And that is one of my biggest tenets and focuses is we don't have to choose the polarity it doesn't have to be one way or the other. It can be both. And in fact, that's when we become most productive is when we go to what I call the influential third. What does it look like to have both things in your life, those structure and flow? And how can that help you be the best person you can be, have the most productivity, the most creativity, the most impact? Are you ready for this one? I'm very excited about this. Uh, okay, so let's talk about what structure is and what flow is. Structure is the things we have that make life predictable. Now, there's two things we can never have that we seem to always want, which is certainty and control. And if any of us who lived through the pandemic or like I'm 58, I've lived through a lot of stuff that has taught me in my life. There are no such things as certainty and control, even though um, we really want those things and and. Um, like there's a subconscious craving for those things. So this is not about creating certainty and control. This is about creating um, some predictability and some regulation in your life. That's what structure does, okay? Now there's flow. Flow is the other side of the polarity. This is about flow is wild, it's natural, it's unplanned. It's it's moving through the world and and allowing things to happen. And both are important. And sometimes, and especially in our like business world, we have to have structure and discipline, but we sacrifice creativity. We sacrifice movement in the moment. We sacrifice, you know, possibilities because we create the structure. But then if we have flow and no structure, we're just going to be making it up as we go along and probably wasting a lot of effort and energy. Um. So, or, or, the shiny things, right? Just getting distracted a lot because we don't have a plan. So ideally what we want is maximum structure, maximum flow. So to allow both of those to come and work to our highest advantage. So let's, let's I'm gonna walk you through this. We're gonna talk about low structure and low flow, high structure, low flow, low structure, high flow, and then high and high, both, okay? Ooh, did you did you get that? Don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through again. No problem, all right? You know, if you're watching this, I just got my hair done. If you're not, you're missing out because I just got my hair done. I'm feeling a little sassy. <laughs> I do, and I got a little bit of purple back in. Anyway, I totally digress. But anyway, so let's talk about what, what this looks like. I'm, I'm gonna walk you through it and then we're gonna talk about what it looks like, how it shows up. Low structure, low flow. That means... You have no structure and no flow. And that can be pretty despondent, maybe maybe depression, anxiety, um, because you're really not moving in either way. There's no creativity. There's no productivity. You're feeling pretty down. Um, now, there are times in our life when um, 
maybe we choose to have no structure, no flow, you know, you're just going to veg out one day. Uh, and that's totally okay. I am a big proponent of bringing it all down and just releasing for a day. It's, I, I sometimes struggle to do this myself. And yet it often feels like, wow, I just really needed to power down. But if that power down is becoming consistent, that, that, now, now that's an issue because this, this could be maybe something much bigger. So just being aware of being in a state of low flow and low structure sometimes leads to depression, anxiety, things like that. But what is it, what is it to have like low structure and high flow? What that can mean is like, if you watched romantic um, comedy movies in the 90s, like the manic pixie girl, that was a character that a lot of us can like uh, have seen in movies portrayed as the wild girl with the abandon. And she's like so crazy and fun, yet she's often untrustworthy and disappointing because um, she maybe upsets people or breaks agree agreements or promises um, because there's no structure supporting. So a lot of times, low structure, high flow, um, it's like very creative. If you know somebody who like, you know, like the nutty professor, <laughs> they're all up in their thoughts and their creativity and the systems and life, like they are going to cancel on plans because they're, because they lose track of time um, and things like that. So that, and, and none of these are right or wrong. Remember, there's no judgment here. We're just looking at patterns of behavior and how we can shift them to make them work better for us. Okay. So, um, so that's high flow. Sorry, I just had to look, grab my notes. Um, bright, shiny things. If you are somebody or you know somebody who easily distracted, they're probably low structure, high flow. What does high structure, low flow look like? That looks like somebody who's pretty regimented. Um, and they have a lot, they, they require or they work best with a lot of predictability in their life. And and actually having high structure, it doesn't, um, it's, it, it actually doesn't cause stress. It can relieve stress because life becomes fairly predictable, but what it does do, it robs us of creativity. So we're not living in the moment. We're not expressing ourselves. We're sacrificing everything to structure. So a lot of organizations that I work with, they're, they're typically out of balance or people are out of balance one way or another. They're either and they come to me for balance, right? Because that's what we want. We want the balance. We want that ideal third way, the influential third. So they're either high structure, low flow, where they feel like there's no creativity, no passion, no, no you know, no, um, no, um, I don't know, electricity. And it's just all drudgery or it's all this connection and all this excitement and they're not really getting anything from it. There's no plans, there's no accountability and all this energy they're stirring up just dissipates and doesn't really amount to anything. So it's either one or the other. Ideally, what we would love to have is high maximum um, or high flow, high structure. When we're this way, we get maximum productivity um, and creativity, you get the best of both worlds, which you are absolutely allowed to have. Remember, we don't have to choose between one or the other. That's polarity. That's the thinking of polarity. I can either have flow or structure. I can't have both. Yes, you can. You absolutely can. That's called the influential third. Remember, what is the third way? What is the influential third? What does it look like when everyone gets their needs met? What does it look like when everyone wins? And that's the influential third. So I want to give you some examples of how this shows up in, in our, in our world. Okay. Let's say, um, oh, okay. You're in a meeting and the meeting has an agenda and it's a fairly tight agenda. Um, and then something happens and, um, like somebody gets upset or they get misunderstood or there's an icky topic and, um, and people want to spend some more time on it, but the person who's in high structure says, no, we must go through the agenda. We have to do this. Instead of being able to go, you know what? I'm just, let's just table this for a second. Let's go with the flow. What's happening over here? What's going on? And so now they're sacrificing the agenda, right? For the, um, they're sacrificing the connection and going with the flow to keep the agenda. Opposite. You go into a meeting. What are we doing here? What's happening? <laughs> Everyone just sitting around talking. There's no point. There's no structure. There's no outcome. 
And yes, the creative creative ideas could be flowing and the excitement. And then what are we going to do with it? What's going to happen to it? And a lot of times you get really, really excited in those meetings. And it's like, well, well, nothing happens because we're lacking the structure. So what does it look like to have both? What would it look like to have both um, high structure and high flow? That means we have an agenda set and we're willing to move through um, those experiences to make sure that the, that the needs of the people are being addressed. You know, we're going to develop those creative ideas and make sure we have a plan for how they're going to be implemented. We can definitely account and make space for both. So maybe during the agenda, you have just open time where people can connect or you're building in a little more time just in case things come up and, and things like that. So you can definitely account for both. One of my clients yesterday has, a, um, we uh, one of the organizations I'm working with has somebody new on the team. And one of my clients, she said, yeah, we just, we've been really connecting and we spent a lot of time the other day just talking um, about our lives and about who we are and, 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 you know, just not outside of work, just our personal connection. And she's like, I don't know if it was that productive. Like, okay, pause, pause. First of all, this is a great example of, yes, they had the structure of the meeting. And also, also we have the flow because there was some flow going on in there where there's some really strong connections being made. And even though it's the talk wasn't just about work, there isn't, there is no boundary between work and life and home life. There isn't. You bring your whole self everywhere you go. You bring your family everywhere you go, right? I can do a whole podcast about this, like how Anytime you come to work, if you can imagine everyone you work with and all their family with them, right? all their family <laughs> around them, because they're bringing them all with them and, and their, and their form behaviors, attitudes, beliefs, they're, they're, they're all coming with them. There's no division. Okay. So the fact that they're getting to know each other on a personal level is choice. And that's part of the flow and allowing for that flow and saying, oh no, we need to stop because we have the structure. That's the beautiful balance. And just making that choice to say, you know, this feels really good. Let's keep doing this. Um, or, you know, or maybe let's continue this conversation another time. And so I'm allowing for that flow to come through while being mindful of the structure. And I can totally have both. And that's how you become super um, productive. Now, let me give you some suggestions. And I'm not perfect at this. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning as I go. Some of the things that can help you be high flow, uh, high structure and high flow. The first is a, some kind of morning practice, some sort of routine that you have in the morning, whether that's exercise, meditation, something that you wake up and you do every day. I am working on implementing this right now because it's a whole thing with my dogs. I have an old dog and a young dog and my young dog like turned on the old dog. Anyway, it's a whole thing. And so I have to get up and be with the young dogs. And so now I'm thinking about, okay, what can I do? as part of a practice. Anyway, uh, and I'm working on creating um, a better morning uh, structure. The reason why this is so important is because once you have that structure, that foundation for the day, now you're more open to um, the unexpected, the creative, the flow, you know, the, the wildness that can come because you've created this foundation for yourself. Another thing to do is to create some structure as, Maybe do some Sunday planning. I know, I know, I know so many people because I, I see it and I see people talking about it and they talk about the Sunday scaries and um, I get it. And sometimes I get Sunday scaries too. And I have my own business. <laughs> I have my own job, you know? I mean, this this company is what I made it to be. Um, and I get the Sunday scaries. But one thing that, could help. And I'm just throwing this out there and you, you can do with it what you want is to make a plan for the week on a Sunday. And I have a friend, my best friend, Jim, I talk about him all the time and he and his partner and every week they have a, um, <clears throat> they have a meeting where they work out what's going to happen for the week. Who's going where, who's attending what. Now, listen, I have tried to get my husband to do this so many times. He's just like, oh, he's a very flowy person. All right. He's a scientist. He's like a scientist. He's like a mad genius. For whatever reason, this doesn't land with him. And you know what? That's okay. But I actually have started to do this. Just come up to my office for about 45 minutes on a Sunday. 
and look at what I have for the week. If I have calls that people are calling, are connecting with me about possibly working together, I do a little email. Hey, I'm so excited. All of those things. So I kind of set myself up for what I want to accomplish that week. And then I just leave it. Um, it, it, it relieves the Sunday scaries if, if that's something you, and it also kind of sets you up for the week a little bit. So you could try this. This is, again, this is wisdom. You might want to try if, if not, that's okay. These are just some ideas. Um, I mentioned earlier about, you know, powering down, you take a day or a week. I, I have a colleague who just took a three month leave of absence from her, um, job as executive director of a nonprofit. Three months seems like a lot, but if, but if she can do three months, you could do a day. You unplug, unwind, um, just spend a day being. I don't, you don't have to do. The idea that you don't have time for that is not true. Um, we make time for what's important. And and also a day of downtime you, gives you so much energy. It fills your cup. It allows you to just power down so you can power up. What I know for sure is hustle is not sustainable. You know, the pushing and driving is not sustainable. Grace, flow, and ease is sustainable. And, and so creating that grace and ease, sometimes that just requires powering down and not getting that lot done. Unless I struggle with this, okay? Because I, I had very parents who are just like productivity all the time. Um, so I, I struggle with this. And um, I have learned the benefits of like just being my dog for a day. <laughs> just just being, you know, binge watching or reading or whatever, whatever, you know, whatever allows you to power down. Um, okay. Now, the other thing is, um, other things you can try is um, establishing long-term goals. Now, um, you know, and uh, one of my clients is in working with an organization and they are working on establishing goals, establishing um, some systems and processes um, and some long-term vision. Because here's the thing about long-term goals and a long-term vision is, you know, structure can often not be very sexy. You know, it's not sexy to be like, oh, I want to save my money because one day I want to buy a car or a house or something. There's no immediate gratification. There could, There's probably not. Um, so by keeping your eye on that long-term goal, you're going to stay in that structure. So if you're like raising money and you want to, your, your goal is to like call, you know, five or 10 people a day or a week or whatever, and you're creating a structure to do that. And then you're like, well, nobody's calling me back or nobody's that's, I'm just going to stay in that structure. Um, and a lot because I'm keeping my mind on that goal. Okay. So the long-term goal can keep you in the process and it also can help stimulate the creativity because now the creative ideas can flow about how to create that vision. Um, because that's where the creativity comes. It's, the, the vision is what, but the how is, 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 is in the creativity is in the structure and the flow. And, and, and in this organization, they are now looking at how much they are creating, not just creativity and the flow, which they had, it's creating structure, system of accountability, um, which is really going to heighten trust because again, structure creates pre predictability. We create agreements with people and those agreements then create predictability. And so structure allows us to build trust with people because we're going to show up when we say we're going to show up, okay? We're going to get something done when we say we're going to get something done and that creates trust. All right, um, the last thing I want to say is pay attention to what's happening. And if you can, in all possible way, release judgment of any of this, okay? Release your judgment and look at this as observation. Isn't that interesting? Huh? Isn't that interesting? Or, ooh, that's some really good information about where you work best, how you work best. You know, structure can be almost addictive and so can flow. And, and you can get yourself out of balance and not really understand how to get yourself back in you know, um, that's book a call with me. We'll talk about it. So, and you know, because, and you're like, Oh, um, I think I need a lot of structure or I need a lot of flow. Wait, what does that say? Um, and let, let me just share a couple of stories. Cause I think this is really going to help, but just pay attention to what's happening to you, to the people around you, to, um, to the situations in your work, in your life. You can also have conversations with other people, with your teams about this. So you can have 
um, so you can be more productive. Again, the key is to release the judgment. This is information. This isn't, oh, you're so productive or not productive. This is just information. Uh, and when we can do that sort of from the 10,000 foot level, we can really start to see things. Again, let me share some stories. I, I'm going to share a story about my relationship with this because I am kind of a wild girl. <laughs> I like to make it up as I go. I was inspired today to teach you this lesson and I'm going to do this. I'm going to teach you this lesson. I'm going to record it for you. Yet it's part of when I finish recording this, it will go into a part of my hourglass content system, which I have a podcast on. If you want to learn how I do that, how I deliver a lot of content in very little time, now it's going to be part of this structured system. And I'm going to record this today and it may go out and uh, it'll go out in a couple of weeks from when I'm recording it, but that's okay. Right. So I have, I can be creative and I can be in the moment and yet it's part of a bigger process. And what I've learned in my life is I thought I didn't really like structure. It felt containment, but the truth is the more structure I have, the more I'm allowed to be creative, the more, the more like productive and effective I get, the more the ideas and the energy is flowing because I know there's some predictability and the, that predictability allows my creativity to open up. If I was trying to create structure in my life, now I'm exhausted probably and have no space for the creativity. That's just been my experience. I, the story I told myself is I don't like structure, but actually I really do. What I did and I don't like is people telling me what to do <laughs> because I am a rebel in art. And I was like, a lot of times, I don't like people telling me what to do. And because like, you don't tell me what to do, but when I choose it for myself, when I choose it for myself, I will create that structure. I will keep that habit because I am choosing it. Nobody's telling me to do it. And that is, I think, true for most people. People don't want to be told what to do, but when they choose it, so when you or your team and you choose to do this, it's the energy of choice and you're, you're choosing to create that structure in order to keep the ideas fresh. You know, if you're, if you're an organization and like, we have great systems, but it's just, we're, we're lacking passion. We're lacking connection. We're lacking. We're afraid to try anything new. You're going to, you're getting complacent. And that's the cue for you to like, Hey, let's fire up our creativity. Let's fire up our flow. And then I'm, there's people like me and other people that can help you do that. If you're an organization, like we're full of passion and creativity. We don't have any systems. We don't have any accountability. And we feel like we're doing all this work and not getting a lot for it. You could be overly flow and a little short on structure. So pay attention to what that looks like for you because I had to pay attention to what that looked like for me. The last thing I want to share is just a story and uh, there's two two people, doesn't matter where they're from or what they're doing. But, but there's one person who was hired to create structure um, and to, uh, you know, the train, run those trains on time, right? Uh, and no matter what happens, this is, you know, this there's a structure, there's an agenda, we're getting this done. Another person who... Um, who the, the structure person worked for a person that I think values flow more than structure. Now, intuitively the flow person was like, mm, I need this structure because this is really going to help us get this done. But then once this started happening and the structure, then the flow person was like, Oh, this is moving too fast. I'm uncomfortable. I don't like what's happening. This is too much change. Um, and, and I think maybe they felt like, whatever their contribution was or however they worked wasn't being validated. Anyway, this person wound up taking um, the person off the project that the, let me, let me say the, the, the flowy person wound up taking the structure person off the project. And subsequently little got done. And I want to unpack that for a second, because what I do is I help people understand how their thoughts and feelings contribute to their everyday day-to-day -day decision making. So instead of, you know, what I wish for a situation like this, and I'm sure you can, you can, there's millions of examples around you of, of somebody like this, somebody who's structure and somebody who's flow and the conflict that arises because of it, is that if we understand where this is coming from. And I know, <laughs> but the first question I would ask is, tell me about your childhood. <laughs> Again, remember I told you, we all bring everything to work, everything we've been, 
everything we are, it comes with us and it's making those decisions. So the fact that one person got uncomfortable with the change that they actually wanted to implement that actually needs to be implemented. And then was like, whoa, 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 pause, pause, because I'm not comfortable and not really being able to understand what was going on in them and like looking at it, oh, this is information. Why is this making me so uncomfortable? What's going on here? Which is needing it to stop. And then the other person maybe kind of like just mowing over people. <laughs> We're like, get out the way. Here comes instead of pausing and saying, okay, I'm sensing some discomfort. What's going on here? So when we're out of balance, we tend to either sacrifice, we'll either um, um, save the bit, bridge and burn the relationship, or we'll burn the or we'll burn the bridge and save the relationship. And those are the two extremes of structure and flow. But we can have the bridge and the relationship. I swear it is possible. Trust me, trust me. Like if you have that situation, what you just what is the third way? Always think about what is the third way. How can everyone here get their needs met? How can there be structure and flow, trust and accountability, peace and conflict? This understanding polarity and how to move past it is absolutely the most critical thinking and skill that you can have in order to be a more effective leader, a more effective motivator, a more effective fundraiser, whatever it is that you want to be. And the structure and the flow is just part one piece of that. I've talked a lot here about peace and conflict, praise and criticism all of the trust and accountability, all of those things. Structure and flow is another piece of it. So look in your life and see, where can I use more structure? Where can I use more flow? Um, and how can I create the best of both worlds? What does it look like when we all win? What does it look like when all needs are accounted for? And that is when maximum productivity, maximum creativity happens. That's where you want to be. That's when possibilities open up. Um, so those are my suggestions for creating structure in your life or creating and flow, um, and how it can work for you. If you want to connect with me more about this, or you, you jam on the stuff I'm talking about, and you want to learn more about who you are, how you lead, um, and how you can put more into the world. Cause I know you want to, uh, with less stress, with more ease, with less work, um, then book a call with me. There's a link in the show notes. It's, um, um, book a call with me. And if I can't meet with you, I have tons and tons of free resources I can guide you to, to help you be more productive. And that's it for me in this episode of the Influential Lab Profit. Love you. Keep up the good work and I will see you next time.